Shalom, all praises unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Racha Kodash, double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the hopeful elect Akim that teach in this word. Shalom, Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Racha Kodash. Now, as you can see here, this is a video, um, you know, from this channel called The Critical Drinker, and, it, you know, he does movie analysis. And he basically, you know, I saw this the other day, and he goes into the movie Falling Down, all right? And you can see it by the title, The Great American Lie. So I'm going to play a bit of what he says here. And when you, if you know in the movie Falling Down with Michael Douglas, it's a 90s movie. And it's basically, you know, the, the guy is basically in the movie fed up with the state of America, basically. An Edomite man, a so-called white man fed up with the state of America back then in the 90s. All right. And, you know, the lie, basically, you know, the work hard and you can achieve the American dream, which is all a lie, man. All right, where you know where we're not, you know, America or the Western society is not like the communist system, you know, oppressing its people. When you're being oppressed here, it's all and it's all all these truths are now, you know, coming out now. Basically, how much this system is just a complete lie, man. That whole bullshit that they teach you: work hard and you'll achieve. All right, no, you you like in this system, you go to school, they tell you that work hard and you will achieve. That's all lies, man. You know. You're working hard in school to become, you know, a slave for the society, man. This system, basically, for the international bankers to be a cog in their machine. All right. What did it? What's that saying, man? It's not in school. They don't teach you um, how to think. They teach you what to think. All right. So they program you. Keep the laws. But then when you look at society, when you actually look at society, you know, all the people that are crooked are the people that achieve in this society. The people that follow the straight path and try, I don't mean it in a biblical way, I mean the whole, the systematic way, you know, that work hard and you'll achieve nonsense, are the people that are struggling. So, and the and people are finding out that this is just, this system has been a lie from the beginning. All right? So we're showing you that we're at the end of the world. But what does the prophecy say in Obadiah? I'm going to read that in a minute. You know, when I put thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down. All right? So let me, and so America's been going down anyway since the 70s. All right, it's been on its way out. But let me play some of this here and then I'm going to read some scriptures. So oh, here we are, staring down the barrel of the closest I'm ever likely to get to a video essay. You might be bored to tears by this one, or you might just find it helpful and informative. I'm not really sure to be honest, but I'm going to give it a try anyway. So grab your whammy burger and let's get started. Part 1. The American Dream To understand where this film and its main character are coming from, you need to understand the nature of the American Dream and how it became the foundation of traditional American culture, basically symbolising everything the country aspires to and represents. Only then can you see how it became the framework for the great American lie that permeates every aspect of falling down. In broad terms, the American Dream is the idea of upward mobility, a true meritocracy free from the constraints strengths of oppressive class systems or government bureaucracy. America sold itself as the land of opportunity, a place where people could come from all corners of the world to make a fresh start, to carve out a new future for themselves, to stand or fall on their own merits. It was a world where even the average man could attain wealth, success and happiness with enough hard work, innovation, entrepreneurship and good old-fashioned can-do attitudes. And it represents a kind of unwritten contract between you and the rest of society that if you just follow the rules, do the right thing, work hard and contribute, then you'll ultimately be rewarded. It's a noble idea to aspire to for sure, but like so many noble ideals, it's ripe for exploitation and corruption, which brings us neatly to the world of falling down. Part 2. A Hot Day. So that, the, the intro kind of, he says quite a lot, and I mean the whole video is, is pretty good. Because it shows you the lie of the American dream, the lie of Babylon, you know. But if you um, if you uh, see right in society, they, that whole lie about working hard and whatnot and achieving, it's all a lie, man. You come the other, the the modest man can achieve in America. That's all BS, man. And you know that they 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 allowed for a while. For example, you can like what did they do during the C hip, the C hip thing? What did they destroy? They destroyed all the mum and pop businesses. That's all the people that you know you know, had that American dream, all right? Successful, small businesses. They destroyed all of that. Now the people don't have that anymore. Now people are what? Now people are, 
you know, being oppressed by the state, man. So that was all, it was all a lie from the beginning. See, what you don't understand is this whole system, all right, you know, beginning with America, all right, is, is, a, is a product of the New World Order, the international bankers, man. They control it all. They control the economy. They control who's rich, who's poor. They run it all, man. And now what's happening is they're closing down shop, which is, which is their main shop is America, which is Babylon the Great in the scriptures. They're closing it and they're pretty much bringing in the new world order, which is they, they, their plan is to, 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 to you know, see, micro sea hip everybody. This is the time that we're in. So people are waking up to this, this great lie, man. You know, people are struggling to pay their rent. People are struggling for food shopping, whatever it is, it is man. So, but this system's been a lie from its beginning, all right? It was built upon lies, okay? And now it's, go, it's, now it's falling down, all right? So let me read this here, actually. Let me start with Obadiah. So like he said in, that, in the beginning of that, um, the intro as well, right? You know, pretty much that movie falling down is, is, is very relative to today's society. It was a very forward-thinking movie because it's showing you exactly what's happening today, man. And then it, and and look, the image of the movie is who a so-called white man in a suit and tie, the briefcase, going to work, working hard, the middle-class so-called white man, you know. So hey, it's all it's all coming down now. So Obadiah, from the first from the first verse, it says, "The vision of Obadiah thus saith the Lord power concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord." And then an ambassadors sent among the heathen, arise ye and let us rise up against her in battle. Who's Edom? Edom is the so-called white man today, all right? That's their true uh, biblical race, all right? They're not, they're not white people, all right? They're, they're Edomites. That's who these so-called white people are today walking the earth. They're known as, biblically known as Edom, okay? The Edomites, okay? So we have heard an ambassador, we have heard a rumor from the Lord and an ambassador sent among the heathen, arise ye and let us rise up against her in battle. And that's talking about pretty much the heathen nations, all right, rising up against America now, Babylon the Great. Because at one point, you know, we know when America dropped the atom bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, that silenced the world, you know. America was, had its peak time, it was on top, okay. But now... You know, and that silenced all the lesser nations. It silenced the, the, the Iranians. It silenced, you know, the East Indians. It silenced the Arab world. It silenced the um, East Asian world, the Chinese, the Japanese. Everyone was silenced by the power of Esau's technology. All right. But now the heathen, which is all these other nations, all right, are rising up. All these other, all the nations outside of the Israelites are known as heathens, man. Okay. The natural Gentiles, man. Okay, and then it says, arise ye and let us rise up against her in battle. Yeah, and so then now these nations are rising up against America in battle. They're getting ready to destroy America. This is the time that we're in, man. Okay, so now the nations that are once considered weak are rising up against America. And they, and they all have what? They all have the nuclear weapons, man. Okay, behold, I have made thee small among the heathen that are greatly despised. And that's talking about the so-called white man, the Edomites, beginning with the so-called Jews, all right? They're being made small amongst the heathens, meaning everyone's seen them for, for who they are now, that they're the wicked. I mean, just look at what them so-called white people calling themselves the ish people today. Look what they're doing in the state of Israel. They're, caught, they're bringing the world into the brink of World War III. And also look what they're doing to the, those people over there, so-called innocent Palestinian people, which there's no one innocent. But look what they're doing. They're killing women, children indiscriminately. They're committing a whole genocide, man. And... and uh, uh, that's the so-called white people, all right? They're committing genocide, and that's the history of the so-called white man. Everyone knows that. Your history is genocide, rape, robbery, and murder. Now you're being despised amongst the nations. Now everyone is looking at you for who you really are, all right? And this facade, this whole systematic lie that you've, this lie that you've pushed for hundreds of years is, is basically the veil is being pulled, man. It says, the pride of thine heart, this is the point where I wanted to get, the pride of thine heart, Oh no, verse 4 is where I wanted to get it really. But let me read this here. The pride of thine heart have deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? And that's talking about the Edomites, the so-called white man. That's the spirit and mentality of the Edomites. Their spirit and mentality is who will bring them down. Who shall bring me down to the ground? They think they're always going to be on top forever, man. Okay? 
And, and you know, we know according to the scriptures, the Lord is coming back. Yahweh Shai is coming back to bring them down, all right? The true power, the true heavenly, the heavenly Father's son, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is coming back to bring them down. But that's the characteristic and trait of a so called white man. They're, pri they're proud. They're the proudest of all the nations, okay? Of all the heathens, the so called white man is the most proudest, the most exalted, the most that thinks he will never go down, the most, you know, thinks nothing can ever happen to their society. That's the so called white man, the pride of thine heart. You know, but now a lot of these so called white people, right, because the truth of the Bible is coming out, they're thinking twice. A lot of them know now America's Babylon. You know, they're seeing the state of the world. They know we're coming to a brink of World War Three, And, you know, a lot of people know if there is going to be a World War Three. we know that there is according to the Bible. But people know if the, the, the general population, they know if we do go into a state of World War, it will be nuclear. It ain't going to be a conventional war like World War One and Two with the guns and bullets and whatnot. It's going to be nuclear. So the pride of thine heart have deceived thee, man. Their pride has deceived them. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rocks. So that's a, a characteristic of the so-called white man. They, their pride. And it says, they, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rocks. Because why? Because the so-called white man, is his habitation is, you know, is the mountainous terrains, the, 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 the caves, man. The mountainous terrains of Petra. All right? And then the world that he's built, he's built it and designed it in the, in, in the form of what? Mountainous terrains. Just like... That's his spirit. All right? Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rocks. Just look at all these high-rise buildings we live in these cities, in London, in, in New York, in LA. It's all these high-rise buildings, man. It's Chicago. All these, um, you know, the twin towers, ta towering buildings, towering tower blocks that we, he's, put, he's put the people in. You know? That they're symbolic of them caves, man. It's in their spirit. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? And that's the spirit of the so-called white man. Their mind state is who's ever going to bring them down. But we're living on the brink of your destruction, which is primarily talking about America, which is Babylon the Great, all right? It says, Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, though thou set thy, thy nest among the stars, then shall I bring thee down, saith the Lord, all right? Yeah, and they exalt themselves as the eagle. What's the, sim what's the, what's the symbolic sign of the so-called white man? The eagles, the eagle, all right? Which is the proudest of any bird. It flies the highest, and bros always kind of bring this information out. It flies the highest. It's a filthy bird, you know? Which is symbolic of the so-called white man. His pride is on, top of, is, he's on top of the world. He rules the world. Beginning with their international bankers, you know, their pride is, the, their pride is high. See? So though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. And what does that mean, setting their nest among the stars? They're satellites, man. Because really America, you know, was on its way out or declining, you know, during the time of the Vietnam War, 60, late 60s, 70s, you know, when they, when they were building them satellites into the sky, the, 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 um, the Sputnik, the space race between Russia and America, which they're, all, they're both Edomite nations. You know, that space race. So they set their nest among the stars. Thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So that's when the Lord's, Lord's began to start to bring America down. And that's why during the time of the Vietnam War, what was a big thing in America? Drugs. Because those were all, all wars, like we always go into it, all wars, all right? All wars are bankers' wars, okay? For you, for, you, for you people, man, for you going out there. All wars are bankers' wars. These wars are not fought for patriotism and the country. No, they're fought for the, for the interests of the international bankers. Every single war that there's been since the so-called white man's been in power has been, been fought for the interests of the bankers, okay? Not, not for no patriotism for the land. No, you're fighting for the interests of the bankers. Okay? So what was the, um, the Vietnam War? What, what, you know, why was America... When it says, then will I... It says... Though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So the Lord start to bring them down during that time. You know, when they set their space satellites in the, in the stars, you know, uh, you know, during and after the Vietnam War, America was infested with drugs, man. Poverty, drugs. America was on a, a rapid decline to what you have today. Most of America now, most of the major cities in Babylon and in Europe too, are de but primarily Babylon, are derelict, man. You've got mass poverty of the actual citizens of the land, all right? So it's, it was declining since that time to up until today. See? 
So now is the t basically the days of the complete end of America, man. All right, let me read this here. This is Habakkuk 2, and I'll go from 1. Habakkuk 2 and 1. It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and I'll watch to see what, they, what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. It says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he that he may run that readeth it. And what's, what does that mean? And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. What's that talking about? What's the vision? The vision is prophecy, man. All right? And standing upon the tower is what? The, the, the prophets, the brothers that teach this word in the name of Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. Standing upon the tower meaning we are basically the watchmen. We're watching for the, the signs that the Lord written the scriptures. We're watching for the signs of the end, the biblical end, the signs of the end of America, the signs of the destruction of Babylon. These signs we look for. Okay, so I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and I'll watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord said unto me, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it, which is the prophecy. That's the vision. For the vision is yet for an appointed for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. That's talking about the vision, all right, is yet for an appointed time, is what? The prophecy of America being destroyed, all right? The nuclear missiles, the, the World War Three that's about to take place, the, the NWO, the, the CHIP, you know, because, see, before America's nuked, we always go into this before America is destroyed. The hour of temptation is coming. The world is going to get pushed by the international bankers, you know, to basically take this micro sea hip. The citizens of the world, all right? In particular, the Lord's chosen people, which are you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. Esau is going to push to, to, to put that mark in our people, okay? The sea hip. So, so it says. Write the vision and make it plain upon I said Sulakia. It says that he may it says, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Yeah, it ain't gonna mean it will it's not it, you know, it feels like it's taking a long time, but it ain't. It's gonna come speedily. Alright? That's why we're living in the basically the Lord speed sped up time, man. Alright? So we're waiting for that micro sea hip to be pushed, and Lord willing, you know, we're gonna fight through it and not take that. The hopeful elect ain't gonna take it. And then we're going to witness the destruction of Babylon, America, and the deliverance of the children of Israel. I mean, this world, man, that we live in, you can clearly see, man, that we're in a, in a world that, you know, it needs a change, man. It can't, society can't go on like this forever. Just look how mundane and gloomy and evil this, this world has become, man, in particular America, in particular Europe. Look how, look how demonic this, this place has become, man. So we, that's the vision, the vision yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak, meaning it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. America is going to be destroyed, all right? And not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Yeah, because it seemed like to us as fleshly men, like it's taking time, but it ain't. It's to see the time, the time on earth and the time in heavens is, 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 is two different times, all right? See? Well, see, for us it feels like a long time, but it's nothing. The Lord, you know... You know, ain't been gone for that long in the heavenly realm. You know what I mean? It just seems like it's taken a long time to us on earth, but it's gonna come to pass. I mean, look at the what? Look at the direction the world is heading in. You can clearly see it's heading into a direction of war. Okay, world war. So let me end it on this. This is Revelation 18. This is Revelation 18 and uh, and five. Revelation 18 and five. For her sins have reached unto heaven. The Lord have remembered her iniquities. This, her sins have reached unto heaven is talking about Babylon the Great, all right, America. For her sins have reached unto heaven. Okay? So the Lord, the Lord have remembered her iniquities. So Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, he's seen everything that America has done, man. But get with a so called white man in America, these international bankers, what they've done, how they got the land to begin with. You know, the evils they've done behind the scenes, their politics, how you know how cutthroat they've been on the planet. So America is nothing but a great kingdom getting ready to be brought down. That's all it is. Just like Egypt, just like Babylon in the past, Egypt, you know, just like the Medio Persians, the Greeks, the Roman Empire, which America is Rome again. They all went down, right? They were all empires of history. Guess what? America is soon to be an empire of history. This is just the time of them to be on top. 
but it's going down. Her sins have reached unto heaven and the Lord have remembered her iniquities. All the evil she's done. All right? Reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her, double according to her works. And the cup which she have filled, fill to her double. Yeah, so she's going to get judgment. Begin with the so-called white man. After America is destroyed, they're going to get double the punishment that they've done to us, all right? They've they done to you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. The wicked oppression they put on, on our people. Slavery, rape, robbery, murder. All these wicked things that they've done is going to come back onto them. And it's going to be a righteous thing to do that. See? According to the scriptures, it's righteous. It's a righteous thing to get payback on your enemies. Okay? How much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously. That's America. The movie um, Falling Down is basically all about the so-called white man, you know, upset with the lies of his society. You know, he believed in that system and basically he found out at the end of it, he just snapped. That's what it was all about. He snapped. Just like today, you're seeing the citizens of America just snapping. There's in particular so-called white people because that was their delicious kingdom. That was for them to live well. America's always been bitter. The, in fact, the very word America means bitter. All right? When you look up words, all right? And it means bitter. So America's always been bitter for so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. It's always been a bitter system. It's always been a, a place of oppression for our people. So that's the truth, okay? So the delicious, America, Babylon being delicious, it says how much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously. Yeah, the American dream, you know, um, you know, come to America and prosper. But it was, and even Bruce Lee showed you that in the Dragon, the movie. He said, "Yeah, yeah the American dream." He said, his wife was telling me, yeah, "We got to go, we got to leave Hong Kong and go back to America." And he said, "Yeah, they." Get, he goes, "They feed you such a good line of bullshit." He said, "You know, come to America, the land of opportunity." And then he goes, "But what they don't tell you is that it's for it's for everyone white." He said, "In the in the small print." And Bruce Lee was right. You know, in the movie, it showed you that. Um, the deliciousness and the prosperity of America has always been set up for so-called white people, all right, to go over there and prosper. That's why you had all them Italians and Irish and all these people from Europe, Germans, Polacks, Polish, moving from Amer Europe to America in the 1900s and they, they, they established themselves. So the deliciousness and living world has always been for these Edomites. So that's why it even shows you in the movie, you know, which was all allowed by their international bankers. And then it showed you in the movie, he basically, Michael Douglas snapped, man. He had enough of, of the lies, basically. See? So how much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and I am no widow and I shall see no sorrow. Yeah, that's the, that's the mind state of America. They're never going down, the greatest kingdom ever. But you're, you're, you're going down. You're going to see sorrow, man. You know? Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine. This is, this is with the nuclear missiles. It's going to be one, that one day, you know, when the nukes are shot off in the World War III, it's going to be, that's going to be the end of that system. The, and the whole world's going to witness this. So therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord power who judge of her. And that's the judgment of Babylon the Great, all right? So Falling Down is a, is a good movie, you know, because it basically shows you the decline of America, man. You know, and and he he saw the reality of the lies, basically. You know, so yeah, so this is the time that we're in. We're in the time of the destruction of Babylon the Great. All right. So you know, with that, I'm gonna say all praises unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rachakudash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and shalom to the hopeful elect Akim that are teaching this word. Shalom, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shai, Bahasham, Rachak, Wadash. Shalom, Shalom.